so this project called Differential Impact of Early COVID-19 Pandemic um, on All-Cause Mortality by Race Nationwide and State by State is a collaboration um, with myself, I'm an assistant professor at Stanford University, with Amy Finkelstein, who is a, a professor of economics at MIT, and a team at the US Census led by Victoria Udalova, um, and also including Katie Genedek and Keith uh, Finlay. And also we were fortunate to have Jeffrey Cox, um, who is a PhD student at MIT in economics, helping us on the project. I should um, uh, uh, say here that any conclusions expressed in this project are those of the authors and do not represent the views of the US um, Census Bureau. And all of the results were approved for release um, and by the Disclosure Review Board of the Bureau. We also thank the National Institute on Aging and NIHCM Foundation for the financial support of this project. So this project was motivated by an observation that early access all-cause mortality was concentrated in only a handful of states while the economic impact of COVID-19 seemed to have been geographically much more widespread in the first full month of the pandemic in April 2020. So what you see here are two maps where to the left, we're plotting excess mortality estimated from publicly available data for April 2020. And unsurprisingly, as you may have seen in the news, this mortality is fully concentrated essentially in the two states of New York and New Jersey. While if we look at the right-hand side map that plots the access decline in employment to population ratio that is coming from the CPS survey, in April 2020, there were declines in employment um, uh, uh, that were pronounced across many more states than just New York and New Jersey. So this observation that we made in our earlier paper led us to think about thinking about how did um, excess all-cause mortality vary across different states for different parts of the population. And in particular, we started looking at how different uh, race and ethnic groups experienced all-cause mortality during the first month of the pandemic across different states, because there, were, there could be two hypotheses. One is if all of the mortality is driven by just the infections with COVID-19, then we would expect them to be all concentrated in New York and New Jersey, for um, any demographic or ethnic group in the US. While if there are also important um, effects of indirect causes of all-cause mortality driven by uh, the economic impacts, we would expect that they're much more spread across the country. So what did we do then? Um, what we do is we take rich individual level administrative data for the near universe of the US population. And uh, to the best of uh, our knowledge, this is the first time this data was used to look at the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic in the US. So we're using the US census version of the SSA's Numident file, which essentially is a collection of records for every individual who has a social security number in the US. You can think about this as people being born, then they're recorded in this data set with their, Numident, with their social security number, date of birth, and sex, and then the Social Security Administration tracks when people die. So if people die, we will observe their date of death for every individual in the US going back um, uh, to, actually it's, it's a very long um, a panel, but we're going to use uh, data from January 2011 to April 2020. What we're going to do next is we're going to take advantage of the census infrastructure to link this Numidon data set to 2010 US census. The advantage of this linkage is that we can um, grab the indicator for race in the census that is self-reported by the individuals rather than reported by uh, coroners, for example, which is commonly used in uh, CDC data. And then we're going to also link it to census address database to uh, have information about where, uh, which state individuals live in. So essentially what we end up having is this database of everyone or near universe of Americans from 2011 to, 2000, to April of 2020, we observe everyone's date of birth, date of death if they die, sex, race, and geography. So what we're going to do uh, with this data then is very simple. We're going to compute expected all-cause monthly mortality for each racial and ethnic group based on very stable historical trends in mortality from 2011 to 2019. So this will be um, just regression, uh, I'm sorry, just regression analysis of the data from 2011 to 2019. 
And then we will compare our predicted mortality for April of 2020 to the realized mortality in April of 2020. And we're going to call that excess all-cause mortality, which is just the difference between what we would have expected a normal April of 2020 would have in terms of mortality for each racial and ethnic group um, and what we actually observe in the data. Then we will account for differences in age, sex, and geography across all racial and ethnic groups to make mortality levels and excess mortality levels comparable. This is really important and is frequently omitted when we hear about uh, mortality numbers in the news because especially the age distribution tends to be incredibly different across different um, racial and ethnic groups. And so if you're comparing a much older population, with, which tends to be, for example, white population tends to be much older than his, both Hispanic or black population, then you will be, uh, not be able to really make uh, informed comparisons. So what do we find using this methods? First, we find that there is in general just substantial raw excess all-cause mortality across all racial and ethnic groups. So it, here are the raw numbers that are not really adjusted for anything. And what you can see here um, are two facts. One is that mortality trends in general historically are incredibly stable. So it is very simple to you know, extend them to, date to, to 2020 and to make an informed statistical prediction of what we would expect mortality to be. So these are just plotting trends for each April of 2011, 12, and subsequent year for three um, largest ethnic and racial groups. And you can see the same graphs for other racial and ethnic groups in the published paper. So here we observe that whites have the highest raw mortality and then experience excess mortality in April of 2020. Blacks and Hispanics have lower mortality um, when it is not adjusted for age and gender in general. And then they also experience very pronounced excess mortality in April of 2020. So this is raw data. These differences, both in terms of levels, but also in terms of excess all-cause mortality become larger when we account for age, sex, and geographic distribution. And this is primarily driven by differences in age. As I've mentioned, what, and what we show in the paper is that Black and Hispanic populations tend to be much younger than whites. So if you look at raw mortality numbers, you would conclude that whites are experiencing higher mortality, which is not um, accurate if you look within the same age bandwidth. So once we adjust for age, um, sex, and race, uh, I'm sorry, age, sex, and, and uh, state, what we, um, the bottom line result of the paper is that um, Black non-Hispanic Americans experienced the largest all -cause mort excess all-cause mortality um, in April 2020, which again was the first full month of the pandemic. And the estimate here is about seven, almost seven per 10,000 people, extra deaths over and above what we would have expected in a normal April given historical uh, data was observed for the black population. Then um, several groups kind of were affected quite similarly. So Hispanic, American Indian and Alaska native, um, non-Hispanic population, Hawaiian and Pacific Islander, um, those groups were experiencing about four per 10,000 extra deaths in April 2020. And then finally, um, the, the least affected, but still there's a very pronounced increases in mortality, were the um, Asian and white non-Hispanic Americans who experienced on the order of two and a half or one and a half extra deaths per 10,000 during April of 2020. So um, these are the aggregate numbers. What else uh, can we say about these numbers? So what we, uh, the other fact that we have found that is quite interesting is that this, it seems that this uh, excess mortality exhibits dramatic geographic variation, um, both in terms of levels of excess mortality across different states, but also in terms of the degree of racial disparities across states. So what this graph here is plotting is the relationship between white excess all-cause mortality per 10,000 people on the x-axis here and black excess uh, all-cause mortality on the y-axis. And you can see that consistent with the previous sort of simplified figure for the aggregate, black excess all-cause mortality is higher than uh, the one for whites practically in all states. So the scale here 
you can see the uh, black excess all cause mortality ranges from zero to almost um, 35 extra deaths per 10,000 in New York, while white excess all cause mortality only ranges, where well, these are still very large numbers, but relatively speaking, it's uh, much smaller, from zero to about nine extra deaths. In Interesting is that these, um, the differences between these numbers also vary dramatically across states. In particular, one fact that is um, puzzling and I think requires a lot more research but also can shed more light on what happened in the early months of the pandemic is that we observed that there were several states where white excess all-cause mortality was nearly zero in this first month of the pandemic, which makes sense because according to all accounts, the virus was not really yet reaching these states. So we would expect, in fact, that access all cause mortality would be quite low. But then mortality among uh, the black or Hispanic population, as we also show in the paper, was already quite pronounced. So these are going to be states that are sort of clustered here where you see the white excess all cause mortality is quite low, but it is already pronounced um, among uh, Black and Hispanic populations. And the question is, um, you know, does this mean that, for example, indirect effects of the pandemic were affecting, since they were already present in other parts of the country before the virus got there, was affecting uh, minority populations uh, sort of at a faster pace, which could be driven by, you know, people could be uh, more exposed <clears throat> to the economic consequences of the pandemic, or they may be uh, more exposed to uh, reducing their healthcare, uh, non-COVID related healthcare consumption faster. There are multiple reasons that are, we think are probably also related to the general notion of differences in, um, of differences in geographic variation in health and um, uh, racial disparities in the US and are going to be um, the subject of our future and we hope uh, future work of other researchers. So I'm gonna stop here, thank you.